Leaderboards are crucial for social retention in your game. Hello and welcome back to another Unity Tiny video, where I'll be showing you how to save values to Facebook instance leaderboards. I'll also be showing you how to retrieve either a certain grouping of scores, for example, scores 1 through 10 or 10 through 20, and how to retrieve just your user's score. The first thing that we are going to want to do is navigate to developers.facebook.com slash apps and I already have my application created. If you don't know how to create an app or how to upload a game to Facebook for a Facebook instant game, you can go and watch my other video in the description below. Now that we are on the page of our Facebook app and we have the instant games module added to our project, we can click on it and go to leaderboards. And once we are here, we'll have this option to create a new leaderboard. So let's give our leaderboard a name. I'm going to call mine global high score. And here we have whether or not we want it to be a contextual leaderboard. As this says, it says this makes the leaderboard restricted to an instant game context. And what that means is, if we go to the documents, it can give us a better understanding. A contextual leaderboard will be different in each instance game context. Whereas a non-contextual leaderboard is global. Contextual leaderboards can only be updated from the context they belong to. So for this video, we are going to be making it a non-contextual leaderboard because we are going to be running the game through our shareable link inside of details and not through a message or a post on Facebook, so there will not be a context for the game that we're running. So once you switch it to non-contextual, you can leave the rest of the values the same and click Save Changes. Now you can see on your leaderboards, we have the global high score leaderboard added with the is context scoped set to false. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is actually add in a way to send a value from our game to the Facebook instant leaderboard. The way we can do that is by going to the SDK for the Facebook instance, and they have here an example of how you would create leaderboards. And the code that we'll be using is the code to add scores to your leaderboards. To add scores to the leaderboards, we'll be using the setScoreAsync method. We can also store additional data along with the score itself. If it's a contextual leaderboard, we'll need to add this dot and a plus sign with fbinstant.context.getID. But we aren't using a context, so we can ignore this for our example. So let's go into the project we'll be adding the high scores to. The project I'll be adding it to is the one I was working on in the last video. If you're curious how I made this game and you would like to also make this game, you can follow the other 10 videos I have in this series on how to make this game. This is the game we'll be adding high scores to. I currently don't have a way to track scores when you kill an enemy, so we'll just be doing it as tester code for now. And later, when I actually add in scores for this game, I'll replace the tester code with the actual game scores. But, let's go into our project, and the first thing we're going to want to do is go to the scripts file and open our Facebook instant service class that we created in the last video. If you don't already have the Facebook instant SDK added to your project, you can watch the video in the description below to learn how to add the Facebook Instant SDK to your Unity Tiny project. But after you do that, we can go into our Facebook Instant Service class and we'll create a new void and call it public async add high score. And let's navigate back to the SDK and look at the code that we need to add. So we can just copy this, go back into our scripts folder, and we will paste our code into the void we just created. Hit Alt-Shift-F if you're in Visual Studio Code to auto-organize your code. And then let's fix our errors. So our leaderboard is not called My Awesome Leaderboard. So we'll change this, and the way we'll be doing it is we'll pass the name of the leaderboard through the function. So here we'll put leaderboard name and we'll have it as a string. 
And since our leaderboard is not a context leaderboard, we'll also remove the dot and the plus context dot get ID. So it'll just say leaderboard name. We'll also pass in the score that we want to set to the leaderboard. So we'll create another variable called score, and it's going to be a number. And let's pass the score into the first value of set score async, which is a number. We're going to leave race elf and level 3 added in for the extra data so we can test how that works. The way this is organized, it would be easy to push this to a JSON format or some other format so you can organize it into a spreadsheet later, or you can display it easier inside of your game using UIs. Then you can see after the leaderboard is done adding the set score async, we do a dot then and then we'll print out console.log score saved to let us know the score was saved. But we can also, if we were to type in entry right here, we could use that entry value to get values from the score that we added, such as the extra data. To do that, we can just organize this out a little better. We'll make what we're adding skip to the next line by putting a slash in and then another plus. Then right here we'll have entry dot get score and we can even say score right here so we'll say score and add a plus. Add another plus here with the slash in to put it on the next line in our console debug. Then we can just copy and paste this. We'll change this to rank and this to get rank. And then the last thing we'll print out is the extra data. So we'll say extra data and then here we'll say get extra data. So after we submit the score using add high score it'll get the leaderboard using get leaderboard async. Then after it retrieves the leaderboard, it'll do a dot then and perform a console.log giving us the name of our leaderboard. And then it'll also set a score to that leaderboard that we tell it to. Now, since we have this as a public async void, one more thing we can do is on the beginning of fb instant.get leaderboard async, we can say return await which will now give our add high score function the ability to have a dot then on the end of it so we can perform more code when all of this is finished. Let's go ahead and save that. And the next thing we're gonna do is add the get high score function. So let's say public async get high scores. And this is gonna return the top 10 high scores. And I'll also show you how to adjust it to return just your score or to return a certain set of scores and not just the top 10. Let's go back to the SDK and look at the code that we need to add. So if we look here, it says retrieve scores from the leaderboard. So we can retrieve scores from the leaderboard using get entries async method, which accepts two parameters, a count and an offset, which we can use for pagination, which is a sequence of numbers assigned to pages in a book or periodical meaning the set of values that we want to return. So let's copy this code and go back into our script file. Now you can see we're having an error on our entries.length. That's because it's missing in the library that we downloaded from the GitHub to remove the errors from the Facebook Instant SDK. So we can just simply add the length variable to that library. The way we'll do that is if we just right click on git entries async and say go to definition, it takes us straight to the fbinstant.d.ts file that we added. And we need to look for entries, which if we hover it over it, is a leaderboard entry. So let's search for leaderboard entry, which is this. And you can see it has get score, get timestamp, get rank, get extra data, all the values that we're using here, but it's missing the length. So let's just add that now. So we'll just say length. And what it's going to be is an array. And that's all we have to do. Going back into here, you'll see that the error is now gone. Excellent, it was that simple. Now let's do the same thing we did with the add high scores with the name. We can just copy this, paste it into here, and then replace this with the leaderboard name. 
So the way that we're retrieving the top 10 scores is with the leaderboards.get entries async, and it's saying to get 10 entries starting at offset 0. So we get entries starting from 0 up to 10. If we wanted entries 10 to 20, we could make this a 10, and it'll get entries 10 to entries 10 plus 10, which would be 20. And that essentially giving you the high scores that are ranked 10 through 20. But we just want the top 10 high scores, so we'll leave it at 10 and 0. Now let's create key downs for testing our leaderboard. So let's go into our Game Manager Service class. And inside of here, we'll copy and paste this. And instead of being an O that we'll push, we'll use a P. And P is going to save the high scores. So we'll say FB instance service dot get instance dot add high score. The leaderboard that we want to add is the one that we created on the developers.facebook website earlier. If we go back, we'll see it's called global high score. So let's put in global high score. And the value that we'll save is just going to be 100. We can add a dot then to be able to perform code after that's finished. And here we'll just say console.log finished adding high score. So let's copy and paste this. And instead of uh, add high score, we're going to do get high score. And we'll make it instead of a P, we'll make it an I. So say get high score. And now we don't need to push a value. We just need to give the high score name that we want to retrieve. And then here we can say finished retrieving. Retrieving high scores. Put an S on it. And the last thing we'll do is add return await right here so that we can use the dot then on our get high scores. Now the only thing we have left to do is to build the game and upload it to Facebook and test to make sure the high scores is working. So let's build our game. Now that the game's built, we can hit F12, make sure we have no errors. We can close out of this, we don't need it open. Let's go back into our project, right click on assets and click show and explore. Then go into tiny export platformer. Then go into tiny export the name of the project that you're working on HTML5 release. And then you need to archive your build folder into a dot zip file. So compress it to a dot zip. And once you have your .zip, we can head back to Facebook, go to your app page, go to web hosting, upload version, drag and drop your build onto the choose file button and click upload. Once it's uploaded, it'll go from scanning to standby, then you can push it to production. Once pushed to production, you can go to details and get your shareable link and test out the game. Our game loaded up, let's push F12 so we have access to the debug console window. Let's push, let's go back to our code to see what the add high score button was. To add the high score, we push P and to get the high score, we push I. Go back into your game. Let's push P to add a high score. It said global high score, score saved. It didn't, though our jump to the next line didn't work right. We must have typed that wrong. Oh duh, I put the slash the wrong way. The slash goes this way. Duh. We don't need it on the last one. Not a big deal though. Go back into our project. It sent a score of 100. We're in rank one. And here's the extra data that we pushed. 
Let's now try to retrieve this to make sure it actually saved and wasn't just reading values from our game. So push I, and it says Andy, 100, finished retrieving high scores. Excellent, everything seems to work exactly how we wanted it to. It printed out my rank, my name, and the score. So we have our rank, my name, and the score. Perfect! I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned anything or you just enjoyed it, please consider liking the video or subscribing to the channel. It would really help me out. Also, if you have any questions, leave a comment below. I'll gladly answer them. But, until next time, have a wonderful day.